Hello, we are going to carry out a global data fit of a basic for data for two titrations and the data has already been entered in origin. So what we see here is a series of DNA concentrations, a series of ligand concentrations and a series of absorbances at 440 nanometers for the first titration and for the second titration. These concentrations have been calculated previously using Excel. So what we have is the two titrations and the first thing that we are going to do is place both of the two data sets into one graph. So we highlight by control and then clicking the two, uh, the two columns, we're going to put, place the data for titration 1 and titration 2 in, um, in a plot. Now note that in this particular annotation, in this worksheet, we have the DNA concentration as column X1 and then the ligand concentration as column Y1 and the absorbance at 440 nanometers as column uh, as, as Y1 as well. So ligand and absorbance are both connected to the X column. By the introduction of a second X column here, now ligand 2 and the, the absorbance at 440 nanometers, these are also correspond to these X axes. So we go to the plot, we want a, a scatter plot, so we press scatter, and what we get, apart from this message, is the plot of the absorbances as 440 nanometers as a function of DNA concentration. We'll edit the axes later so that they actually show what we want them to show. What we want to do now is we want to analyze the data, so we go to analysis, we go to a nonlinear uh, least squares curve fit and if this opens which it now does um, we end up in a window NL fit so because I've used the equation before the equation has already been loaded but if you wanted to you could add a new equation here but we want um, this particular model which is a want an extended 1 to n uh, interaction model we can have a look at the parameters and what we see here is that we have an equilibrium constant, a change in the signal, uh, the signal for the free ligand, the stoichiometry for the interaction and the background. So basically that is the absorbance of the buffer. We can also see that we can indicate whether the parameters are fixed or not and also the number of significant decimal places to which the results will be reported. If you see that there is an additional line here with, without a parameter name, then something is wrong and you probably need to download the function definition file um, again. So we see the model, we've seen the parameters, we'll go back here later, but what we'll do first is we need to select the data. So if I click this, what I see is that one data set has been selected, but actually I want to carry out a global fit so I need to add a second data set. I do that by pressing this little arrow here and it gives me the opportunity to then add the data, the second data set in this graph. So we see the absorbance at 440 nanometers for titration 1 and the absorbance for four, at 440 nanometers for titration 2. So I add this and what we see is now there are two titrations and we also see two plots here. The next thing that I need to do is I need to identify or to tell the software, to tell Origin, the range of the data. Now this is where the X, Y and Z definitions really start to matter. So X is the DNA, is DNA 1, Y needs to be ligand 1, and Z is still 404, the absorbance at 440 nanometers for titration 1. So we now tell the software this is the range of DNA concentrations, this is the range of ligand concentrations, and these are the associated absorbances at 440 nanometers. We of course also need to do that for the second titration, so we expound range 2, we get DNA 2, we want ligand 2, and the absorbance at 440 nanometers for titration 2 as well. So this has now defined the two data sets that we want to analyze. If we now go back, oh sorry, we need to go back up, and what we see is that we are going to carry out a global data fit. We could also do independent fits, but we want a global fit. 
if we now go back to the parameters, we now see that there are more parameters in the model, and these models can also share parameters. Of course, because we're looking at data absorbances at 440 nanometers, um, there are a few parameters that we can that we can share. Both titrations should correspond to the same equilibrium constant, so we share that parameter. Because both data sets are at 440 nanometers, um, the extinction coefficient and the change in the extinction coefficient should also be the same between the two titrations. If you analyze uh, two data sets but they are at different uh, uh, wavelengths, then you cannot share these parameters. But now we can. The stoichiometry, of course, shouldn't depend on whether it's in the first or in the second titration, so that is a shared parameter as well. The only parameter that actually is different between the two titrations is the absorbance of the bu buffer, so the background signal. So those are not shared, uh, but instead they are fixed. We now need to enter some estimates of what the parameters are. So typical ex uh, uh, equilibrium constants are around about 1 times 10 to the power 5. So that's what we're going to enter here. The change in the signal, if we look at the graphs, we see that the absorbance is decreasing, so we're going to estimate that maybe the extinction coefficient goes down by about minus 4,000, by about 4,000. So because it's a negative change, a decrease, we put a minus sign in front of here. The signal of the free ligand, if you know the extinction coefficient of the li free ligand at this wavelength, you can enter that. We don't know it now, so what we'll do is we'll just guess that it is around about 10,000. For typical pi conjugated systems, these are reasonable guesses, but we'll see how good they are in a minute. Stoichiometry, we'll just start assuming that it's a one-to-one -one binding event. The background uh, absorbances we have to take from our lab book. So let's say that this background absorbance is 0.051, and this one was 0.026. So this just has to be whatever is in your lab book. So these are our initial guesses of the different values, with the exception of these two, because they come from our lab book. So what we do now is we have a look at how good the fit is already. So we press the chi-squared button, and what we see is these plots here. Ignore these plots. Basically, this, these are the absorbances plotted as a function of the ligand concentration, which is not very interesting. It's actually more interesting to plot it as a function of the DNA concentration. Now we see that in both plots, the red line, the fit, starts at about half the uh, height of where it should uh, start. And what that means is that we have underestimated the extinction coefficient for the free ligand. So we're going to change this number and we're just going to make it twice as big. We press the chi-squared button again and what we see is that this is now closer. But we also see that the line doesn't come down as far as it should. So what we're going to also do is to change the amount by which the extinction coefficient decreases. So that is now minus 10,000. The extinction coefficient starts at 20,000. And now we see that these lines are more or less where they need to be. Which also means that we can start the fitting. Now you can either do a full fitting in one go by pressing this button here, fit until converged, but especially when you just start with a new data set, it is occasionally good to just do one iteration. So you press that button, and the only thing that you want to see is that this not, does not go completely out of control. Clearly, this was not out of control, so that's good. So now we're confident that this titration is going to converge in the right way. Press fit until converged, and here is where we get the outcome for the, for the analysis. So what we see is that our equilibrium constant is around about um, two times ten to the power well, two times ten to the power five. And this is the er error on the equilibrium constant. This is the change in the extinction coefficient, the original change co co uh, extinction coefficient, stoichiometry. So we get these with all the error margins as well. We also see that fit has converged. So this was the fitting. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to have a look at the data and make sure that we are happy with, with what it looks like. So we press OK. And we get a message. Do you want to switch to the report sheet? 
Yes, that is fine. So here we get all the statistical information again. Again, we see the plots as a function of DNA concentration, as a function of ligand concentration, the residuals for both plots. But what we really want to see now is we want to see the fit curves. And the fit curves are here. So you have the first curve, the first fit to the data, um, which is shown here. These are the calculated absorbances for every data point. These are the residuals. So this is data, this is statistical data that we might have want to have a look at. Now, the most important thing to do at this stage is to change um, this x-axis to a y-axis. And the reason for that is what we want to do is we want to overlay the data, the calculated absorbances, on top of, let's just go to that window, on top of this graph here. So what we have is the absorbances, the experimental absorbances, as a function of DNA concentration, and in a minute we will want to add the calculated absorbances on the top of this window. So if we go back to the actual data, so if you go through here, you see that here we defined everything as the x-axis is the DNA concentration, and then both the ligand concentration and the experimental absorbance are Y data. We need to do the same, sorry, we need to do the same in the actual fit, because if we were to plot this, these absorbances, they would actually end up on an x-axis scale where the x-axis is given by the ligand concentration, not the DNA concentration. So we need to change this, and we're going to turn this into a y-axis. These are the residuals, we don't care too much about that at this stage. We also need to take the second data set, also make these y data. So now we have this data here as a function of the DNA concentration and these calculated absorbances as a function of the DNA concentration. So if we now go back to the graph, we open this window and we see this is the data that is available and what we want to add, let's make this a bit bigger, what we want to add is the fit for the first data set and the fit for the second data set. So we move these so that they appear in the graph. What we also want to do for ease of, uh, of, of editing, we want to ungroup these. We also want to ungroup these numbers. If these numbers are grouped, you can't um, change the plotting style of the individual numbers or of the individual data sets. So if we press apply now, what we see is that the two data sets have been added, but what we now want to do is we want to plot the fits as a line and the original experimental data points as, um, as points. So in order to change that, we need to go to layer properties. We expand this and we now see the individual data sets that are in this graph. Now, this doesn't matter too much, but you can change to whatever you happen to like for these data sets. So blue points in this case, and red points. If we now go to the calculated data, so the fitted curve, we want to change this to a line plot for both of these. And if we press apply now, we can already see the data points have changed color and these have turned into lines. Now, depending on whether this goes into a report or into a PowerPoint presentation, you want to change the width of the line. And for example, three-point lines look very good in PowerPoint presentations. If you also want to make sure that the lines have the same color as the data points, you can set these to blue and this line to red. Let's press apply again. You now see that these lines have the same color as the data. You can make the connection between these uh, splines, which makes them slightly more rounded. But you need to be careful that if you do that, that the line doesn't change too much in its, in its shape. This seemed to be OK or all right, so we leave it like this. Press OK. Press Close. So that looks good. So if this is now a graph for a PowerPoint presentation, 
of course we want to change the axes as well so that they look good the x-axis we want to show the data in scientific format we also want the increment to be a bit bigger so that the numbers don't overlap there we go if we also want to change the y-axis we could do that but this actually looks fine at the moment so we press let's just go back to the y-axis can make this maybe a little bit smaller apply this looks okay what we need to do as well is we can change the thickness of the line you see that happening here we can do that at the left as well it will look better um, and now we just need to make sure that we have the right axes so this is the DNA concentration and this is expressed in molar or moles per decimeter cube if you would like to do that this is the absorbance at 440 nanometers which is in AU now this is a unit so it has to be in italics this is a subscript to that unit so we make it a subscript there you go that looks good now this information here normally goes into your caption so we delete that this graph is fine so we're going to save the project as and if we would now want to copy it into um, an excel or sorry into a powerpoint file copy page and then you can paste it whatever you want so that's the way to do a global fit, a data fit and to prepare the graph so that it looks good in a PowerPoint presentation. Good luck.